Thank you all for joining us. I know it's a little bit chilly. Uh, we appreciate you all for coming out. Uh, my name is Philip Minardi, and I am the Director of Communications and Public Affairs for the Travel Technology Association. We're joined this morning by community travel agents, national travel industry stakeholders, and members of the Maryland Legislature. We're honored to have Delegate Kipke here, Delegate Adams, and Delegate Bromwell. Um, we are also joined by Jay Ellenby, the uh, President and CEO of Safe Harbors Travel Group out of Bel Air, Maryland. Karen Dunlap, who is the CEO of Travel On Limited out of Beltsville, Maryland. Eben Peck, who is the Senior Vice President of Government and Industry Affairs at the American Society of Travel Agents. And Kevin Mitchell, who is the Chairman of the <laughs> Business Travel Coalition. We come here together today to discuss SB 190, a new tax increase being debated in the General Assembly that would apply the state sales tax to the service fees of travel agents, both online and in the community, as well as tour operators, wedding planners, vacation rental managers, and others who work to bring travelers to Maryland destinations. Before I welcome local stakeholders to the podium, to explain the impact this new tax will have on Maryland's travel economy, I would like to take a moment to dispel a couple dangerous misconceptions about this new travel services tax. You'll hear from proponents that this bill simply closes a loophole. That argument is based on the misinformed notion that online travel companies collect but do not remit the proper amount of taxes. The truth is, that that idea has been talked about across this country in courtrooms everywhere. And every court that has examined the issue of a loophole has come to the same conclusion, that online travel companies do indeed properly collect and remit their fair share of taxes. Secondly, there is a misconception pushed by the backers of this bill that this tax will only impact big out-of-state companies. But the fact is that this new tax will have a very real impact on small businesses and travelers right here in Maryland. Last year alone, online travel companies helped consumers book over one million room nights in Maryland hotels. Of those room nights, a staggering 250,000 were booked by Marylanders in Maryland hotels. So as we dispense with the red herring arguments surrounding this bill, we see it for what it truly is, a dangerous new tax on Maryland's economy. And whether you agree or even care that this new tax will harm small businesses in our community, one thing is sure, this bill sends a message to the rest of the country that Maryland has not changed its taxing ways and is still not open for business. It's time to turn the page. It's time to enact pro-growth initiatives here in Maryland it's time to say no to SB 190. Now I'd like to welcome Delegate Kipke up for a couple uh, comments. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I'm here today uh, to stand up for the small businesses in Maryland that have told us in government uh, that they've had enough of a, a government that's constantly taxing them, increasing taxes, increasing fees, and making Maryland a really inhospitable place for them to survive. Uh, Maryland is struggling in so many ways uh, and we need to stop the onslaught of taxes that have gone on over the last eight years and uh, with this election we've seen a dramatic change in the electorate. They supported individuals who uh, I think are sympathetic to the to the concerns of small businesses here in our state and one of the first things that we, we are faced with is yet another tax increase and so I, I'm proud to say that there's many of us in the legislature, uh, Democrats and Republicans, who are working together to improve Maryland's business climate. Uh, we need to lower taxes in Maryland because we're in a competitive place. You know, Delaware, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Virginia are very close uh, to our borders uh, at any point in Maryland. And unfortunately, we're becoming less and less competitive to our surrounding states, and we're losing the economic activity that we need to make Maryland strong. This, is, this bill is just another insult to that, and we need to stand up together against it. Uh, there are special interests that are pushing this bill, and uh, frankly, uh, we need to look out for the special interests of the real Marylanders that uh, uh, show up to work every day and have to balance a payroll and they employ people right in our communities. 
Uh, so uh, I'm encouraging the members of the House of Delegates to resist uh, any new taxes or fees, uh, uh, and I think it's time that Maryland has an opportunity to thrive uh, and to change course from a place where uh, taxes are raised easily to a place where we're looking to reduce taxes and get our uh, business climate growing again so Marylanders can get jobs, uh, pay their bills, and have a high quality of life. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Delegate Bromwell to the podium for a few words. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Delegate Eric Bromwell. I represent the 8th Legislative District in Baltimore County. And I'm pleased to be here to add a bipartisan opposition to this legislation. I was born and raised in a small business in Baltimore County. I consider myself to be one of the one of the voices still left in the House of Delegates uh, in the Democratic Party uh, who is opposed to these uh, types of, of taxes, uh, taxes on services. Um, it's just the wrong, wrong way to go. I'm proud that the House of Delegates hasn't uh, pushed forward uh, any significant tax increases. Uh, this, this coming at this time I think is problematic and we're gonna do everything that we can to support the small businesses in the state of Maryland. Uh, and hopefully uh, kill this, this bad legislation. So thank you all very much for having us and uh, we look forward to working on this. Thank you. Next, I'd like to invite Delegate Adams. Uh, well, thank you very much and I'm glad to be here in support of opposition to SB 190. I believe that um, no new taxes is not just a slogan, it's a matter of survival for many of our small businesses here in Maryland. I'm a small businessman myself from the Maryland's Eastern Shore and I ran on a platform of low taxes and light regulation. People in my district demanded that when I came to Annapolis, so I'm here today to um, support opposition to this bill. You know, we have 1,100 brick and mortar um, small travel business agents that are going to be affected by this bill. I know how taxes affect uh, the economy and how I do business, and I'm, I'm glad to stand in support of, of opposition. We had 8,000 small businesses leave Maryland over the last eight years because of policies just like this, and, and we need to make a difference. This is a bipartisan opposition, and I look forward to continuing that support for you. Thank you. I'd now like to welcome Delegate Mouts. Up to the podium. Thanks, Eric. Good morning. Uh, my name is Johnny Mouts, and um, my district is District 37B. I grew up in St. Michael's, that's my home, and we're no stranger to the hospitality industry. The hospitality industry on the Eastern Shore has exploded. It's strong and thriving. But my opposition to this bill isn't so much for the hospitality industry as it is the small businesses on the Eastern Shore. That's our foundation, it's the backbone to our economy. We want to grow our economy, we want to do things to encourage more small business, not increase the tax burden on them. That's what this bill will do. The ultimate effect is it will, it will create a greater burden on small businesses like many of those on the Eastern Shore and benefit the big players in the industry. We need to do everything we can to protect our small businesses. That's what I ran on throughout the campaign and that's what I intend to advocate for here in Annapolis. So we're going to work really hard to try to do what we can to stand up for small businesses. And this bill is only going to hurt our small businesses. And that's why I'm opposing it. Thank you, have a good day. So we've heard from lawmakers and now it's time to hear from the actual small businesses in Maryland that are gonna be impacted by this dangerous new tax. I'd like to welcome Jay Allenby up to the podium. Uh, again, he is the president and CEO of Safe Harbors Travel Group out of Bel Air, Maryland. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jay Allenby, President and CEO of Safe Harbors Travel Group in Baltimore. Well, excuse me, we were in Baltimore for a number of years. We're now in Bel Air, Maryland. Uh, first of all, happy April Fool's Day. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite days, but uh, unfortunately, this is not a joke as we're about this topic. Uh, this is an additional tax, any way you look at it. Uh, small businesses, medium business, large businesses, any way you want to slice it, it will be an additional tax. But obviously, small business when it comes to travel agencies. Um, in Maryland of 1,100 that you heard. What takes place in my industry is when the hotels, mechanics of it works, when we book a hotel, we often receive a commission. And in this legislation, that commission is not taxed. However, there are many, many cases where the hotels will 
uh, create a separate negotiated deal, either with a corporation or with an individual uh, group where it is not commissionable. In that case, we are forced to charge fees. So when we, in this part of this legislation, when we do charge a fee, that is taxed. Therefore, that is then also passed on down to the corporation or the individual. So a tax is a tax. Uh, I stand firmly opposed to this SB 190. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Uh, I'd next like to welcome to the podium Karen Dunlop. She is the CEO of Travel On Limited out of Beltsville, Maryland. Good morning. I'm Karen Dunlap. I'm president and CEO of Travel On Limited in Beltsville, Maryland. Travel On was founded in 1974, and for over 40 years, Travel On has been headquartered in the state of Maryland. Uh, today, we have three brick and mortar locations in Prince George's and Montgomery counties, and our payroll supports 7% of the 1,100 travel agents who currently are employed in Maryland. Travel On is a global travel management company specializing in business and leisure travel, and our diverse client portfolio includes large universities, contractors, for-profits, and not-for-profits. We don't sell travel to our customers. We facilitate travel to our, for our customers. What we sell is professional, independent, unbiased, and consultative services so that a client can get their best return on investment for their dollar and have peace of mind knowing that there's someone that has their back before, during, and after their travel. Until 20 years ago, most agencies relied on commissions as their primary source of income. This changed when the airlines started commission cuts in 1995. Many agencies didn't survive those cuts, and what was once a pool of 30,000 plus travel agencies in the United States dwindled to just over 10,000 today. The agencies that were successful and remain successful today, like Travel On and like Safe Harbors, did so because they were able to implement service fees for their consultative services. And the travel agency community and the American Society of Travel Agents have spent the last 20 years trying to justify those fees to their customers, and we've done a good job of it. It hasn't been easy, but we've been successful. The introduction of SB 190, which is a new tax imposed on uh, tax-paying small businesses in the state of Maryland, I consider to be a triple threat. It's bad for the agency community because it imposes additional administrative burdens on already overburdened small businesses and an additional tax, new tax, on small businesses, and it makes us less competitive. It's bad for the consumer. If they're forced back into a position where they have to do it themselves to avoid paying these additional taxes on our service fees, they no longer have the support and partnership that they currently have with their agency partners. And it's bad for hotels, or potentially bad for the hotels in Maryland. We booked over, Travel On booked over 4,000 hotel room nights for a total of over half a million dollars in hotel bookings in 2014. And what's going to happen to that revenue if we're in a position where we're we're, we are in a position to make other choices. So I strongly oppose this tax and hope that you'll do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. I'd now like to welcome to the podium Eben Peck, the Senior Vice President of Government and Industry Affairs at the American Society of Travel Agents. Good morning. Thanks to Travel Tech for pulling this together. I want to thank the delegates for coming. We appreciate their support. Uh, I'm Eben Peck with the American Society of Travel Agents. We represent travel agents of all shapes and sizes, including 70 member companies in Maryland. Uh, we've heard a lot about how this bill will only impact the big OTCs uh, and will have no impact on traditional brick and mortar agencies. Uh, and we've also heard that recent changes to the bill uh, mean that uh, traditional agencies are carved out of the tax. Uh, we appreciate the efforts, we appreciate the sentiment, but uh, such a true carve-out uh, does not exist, and here's why. As you heard, as our industry has evolved, uh, travel agents are relying less on commissions and more on professional service fees charged to their clients. This is a critical change that's brought our industry back to health. Uh, if you rely only on supplier commissions, you are at the mercy of the supplier completely. And you, as you heard, the airlines cut commissions abruptly in the 90s, and it was quite uh, traumatic for our industry. 
According to our surveys, about half of our members charge a fee for hotel bookings. Uh, that income under this bill will now be subject to Maryland state sales tax in addition to federal income and state income tax. This is a new tax on our industry. The bottom line is this. Contrary to the myth of the travel agent as a dead or dying breed, those agencies who have adapted to the internet era have not only survived but have thrived. And there's been a shift in business model from one based on commission to one based on fees. Traditional travel agents, especially the successful ones, do the things the big OTCs do and will be impacted by this new tax. We urge the House of Delegates to vote it down. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. I'd now like to welcome Kevin Mitchell, the chairman of the Business Travel Coalition. Thank you, Philip. Thank you and good morning. Dozens of travel industry organizations this week wrote to Governor Hogan, urging him to reject this new tax on travel. These organizations included Safe Harbor Travel Group, American Express Global Business Travel, the Independent Lodging Industry Association, the Teamsters National Airline Division, the American Society of Travel Agents, and World Travel Inc. These organizations purchase and facilitate annually billions of dollars in travel spend. This new tax will be passed on to corporate and university and government travel departments, along with travel agencies' new and significant costs associated with legal obligations, accounting complexities, extensive record keeping, administrative functions for collecting and remitting the tax, and audit and compliance requirements. Travel and meeting managers, including state government travel offices and state universities are under great pressure to watch every penny of spend. All of these administrative costs would be on top of the new tax and would be translated into higher fees from the travel agent to the travel department for services rendered. As such, a double incentive would be created to choose a less expensive destination than Maryland if possible. If not possible, there will be fewer dollars available in Baltimore or Annapolis for restaurants and entertainment, negatively impacting jobs and economic activity. Not only would this bill result in downward pressure on demand for lodging properties of all sizes, but as the Teamsters pointed out in our press release yesterday, it would do harm to Maryland's travel agencies, most of which are small businesses endeavoring to scratch out a living for themselves and their employees. Smaller agencies simply do not have the infrastructure to handle these kinds of requirements. Larger agencies do. As such, this bill will tilt the competitive playing field in favor of the larger mega agencies. Our press release and the total list of the signatories to the governor, to the governor's letter, is available on btc.travel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. So in closing, I'd like to leave everybody with one stat that should encompass this conversation. Industry data shows that a 1% increase in room rate results in a 2% decrease in bookings. This new tax is going to directly impact small businesses and travelers here in Maryland. It's a bad bill. It's a new tax and we should all be against it. Thank you.